Oh, come on. Wait up, Tim. Come on, man. And I'm not taking you fishing in the morning. You're not? No. Yes, not. you are. You said you are. A bear! A bear! Hey, hey, oh, hey, hey, no, no, not this way, the other way! Oh, quick! Oh, oh, my God! Oh, no, watch out! Right behind you! Right behind you! Oh, no, no! Down! Oh, no, 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 <laughs> oh, oh, look who's there! Oh. <laughs> Hurry up! Hurry up! Oh. 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 They're beautiful. Yes, they really are wonderful. Oh, my God, you won't believe what, what happened. What, what? <laughs> okay, listen, we're out there, right? Uh -huh. In the middle of the lake. Yes. Yeah. Middle of the lake. And Dad lost his glasses, his sunglasses. He did? Yep, yeah. overboard. Because oh. he was tickling Chris. Yeah, tickling me, scaring the fish. Well, I don't think he scared all that many fish. <laughs> oh, wait up, we'll be there in yeah, a second. Let's go get your backpacks, guys. Good, good. Come on, wait here. Come on, hurry up. Come on, I've got your cookies here. And mom, mom, he was Put gonna jump bag. in. And I was Open like, Dad, no, they're probably Open way on the bottom. Bag. We'll never find them. Have a great <laughs> time. Bye, mom. Don't forget Bye, to say Dad. thank Bye, you. Bye, Dad. Bye. Davy Jackson is in the office. No, 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 no. I don't want to talk to him. Which show them whatever they want to see. Hey you. I've never known you to pass up a chance to go hiking. Well, I just thought the, I thought the boys would want a few hours without us, and the Andersons are going to bring them home by dinner. Patrick Welsh. Patrick Hennessy Welsh. It's my name. Mm. I like hearing you say it. I know, sweetie. Neither do I. Why do we have to? We have to get back for school. We have to get back to Dad's work, okay? You did good. Thank you. Don't worry. Go get your brother. Why aren't you at the club? Well, we, I was just on my way out. What Where's the gun? Your father's gun. 
What? Where's your gun? We don't have that. We got rid of it. Oh, no. I know it's here somewhere. Where? What is the matter with you? What is the matter? It's not here. What happened? I quit. Your job? I resigned. What? I resigned. Why? I what? quit. They said I took money. Pat, that's insane. They said I took what? money. They want to indict me. No. Yes, they want to indict me. That, just sit down. I don't want to <gasps> sit down, please. No. Sit down. Come on, sit down, Pat. Okay. Okay. Just breathe. Let's get your dad on the phone. Okay? No, 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 no. No, please, please, for me. Come on, Pat. All right. Okay. We will get your dad on the phone. I think it's peachy. Dick's on his way home. Is something the matter? Oh, we just need to speak to you and to Dick. Well, I'm glad you're here. I got some good news from the doctor this morning. It appears this round of chemo's doing the trick. Thank God, Anne. That's great. I have had to resign from the development fund. Had? What happened? Well, they, the university has alleged <clears throat> there's a, a routine internal monitoring process, and they said that funds are missing. I'm going to be indicted. That's absolute nonsense. That's exactly what I said. But if there's going to be an indictment, then, then they must have proof. If the jury can see the exhibit, you may proceed, Counselor. Mr. Welsh had a very elaborate system to embezzle university funds. He'd create applications for non-existent grants, providing these applications in the names of real, though unsuspecting, professors. Check would be issued. He'd forge his or her signature, cash the check, and pocket the money. And in using this system over a period of time, he was able to embezzle almost $25,000 before it came to the attention of university officials. Everybody makes mistakes, and your dad too. And he's sorry. Was there a judge there? Yes. A jury? Yes. And they decided that um, daddy can serve a sentence on the weekends. It's do his punishment on the weekends, and uh, then after that, it's probation. What's that? You shut your fat face! Dad. Okay. Probation is, uh, you don't have to go to jail. You just have to, to report in. I know it's, it's weird now, but it's going to be OK. Did Dad do it? just want to know that everything is all right. You know, we'll be all right. I don't know how this got so crazy. We never should have built this house. <gasps> no, no, it made sense. It's not just this house. It's everything. I've, I've been spending money, like, I'm on the same level with everybody we know, and I, we, can, we just can't do I that. wish you had told me. What? And then we could have worked it out together. If it takes the rest of my life, Peach. I will be the best husband and father. I never want to hurt you. I will never hurt you again. I want to. I'm. You and the boys are the most important thing in the world to me. I know that. Do you remember when I came up? I came up to your dorm and asked you to marry me. Do you? And you were coming back from class and you looked up and you saw me on the steps. You, you were so surprised. <laughs> yes, I was. And I, I, I had a plan where I knew exactly how we could start our lives together and how we could make things work. Well, 
Pat, we can do that. You remember? Yes. You'll get another job, and I'll get one too. We have to get back on our feet together. So they handed me the first challenge of my job. They said, in this new job, you have to surprise the chief surgeon. And that's the only thing we ask. Well, it's his birthday. It's his 65th birthday. He doesn't want anybody to know how old he is. So nobody surprises him. He's out on stage. He's giving a lecture. I come up behind him with this huge cake. I mean, huge candles all over it, blazing. He turns around. His eyes go wide. And I think, that's it. I've got him. And before a moment can go by, he looks at me and goes, nurse? Scalpel. <laughs> I'm getting a drink anyway. You want some wine, please? Yeah. Hey, Pat. Excellent program you did at the hospital. My uh, kid is getting all fired up about going into oncology. Oh, yeah. well, thanks, Terry. That's great. That's great. Oh, Sheila, hi. What a great color. Oh, thanks. So, how is that Girl Scout drive? Going? Oh, uh... PG, I've been meaning to mention that check you guys gave me for cookies. Mm hmm Came back. Well, I'm sure that it was a mistake, but at the bank, why don't you just put it through again? Oh, I did. You know, I hate to even mention it. Patrick, how are you? How much was it for? It's, uh, $18. Oh, Chad, this is so cool. Good, huh? Yeah, Dad. Well, you maybe put your beds this up there or something? Mom, check it out. You guys be careful up there. Okay, Mom. Pretty good? Very yeah, good. Okay. Uh huh. The check you gave to show up for the cookies bounced. Too bad. Great. Dad, Another Dad. crumb for public consumption. He's not going to say anything. Nobody no, is saying anything. Hey, Dad, look at this. It's a fort. Oh, cool fort. Pat, are we in trouble? Still, I would tell you if we were. No, we're fine. Yeah, now. We're fine. I'll, I'll, I'll write another check. How strong is that fort? I already gave her the cash. Get away, Dad. You <laughs> get me out? Stay down. Huh? Don't touch Watch me, out. Dad. Here I come. <laughs> hey, it's a get out. pretty good. Don't yeah, get out. Get out. Oh, no. 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 Oh, Hi, this is Patrick Welsh in the Community Relations Office of Lancaster Hospital. I'm either on the other line or away from my desk right now, but if you'll leave your name and number, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for calling. I talked to him about sex. Oh, great night for being out. Well, he called to say that he was stuck at work yeah, and, and he tried to leave okay, before it, it got really bad. That was four hours ago. Oh, I'm so worried. Nah, not to worry. Thank you so much. Man. You know this is crazy. Check out Lincoln Road again. He would have come this way. He said he was coming right home. I think you and the boys better come back to our place tonight. Oh. I don't want you staying by yourself. Okay. Beachy. Hmm. I went to the house and I found this. My darling, 
You are not only my love, but my life. And I don't know how to put into words all I want to express to you. You deserve a better man than I have become. And I must give you that by ending my life. I know that by doing so, I will be releasing you from the misery I've brought you over these past months. Please know that however I do this, it will be final, with no future complications for you. Please tell Ted and Chris that I will always be watching over them from heaven, and that they made me proud to be their father. Peachy, I hope that one day you'll forgive me and understand that I tried every way I could. Know that there was no one on earth I ever loved more. That I'll never stop loving you, even with my final breath. You and the boys have been everything to me. I love you. I'm so sorry I let you down. We talked a couple of times from work during the day, and everything seemed normal. Every Anything stand out in your mind? Any other problems recently? Has he been despondent? Well, actually, he's just started to feel good about himself. Lieutenant. His car has been located at the bus station in Logan. Pat. Just a minute, please. Dick, it's for you. Sasha. Yeah, this is Dr. Welsh. No, no, I, Peachy, I can't. Peachy, we're going to do everything we can. Thank you. Mom, okay, thank you. what's going on? Oh. Uh, well, we're, we're not really sure, but it's, it's Dad. Where is Dad, anyway? He's upset, and, and we don't know where he is right now. We better go find him. Boys, yeah. I could use your help setting the table for breakfast. You're my sister. I don't know what I'd do if I didn't have you to talk to her. <laughs> you know, it's been almost two weeks, and I'm just waiting. I don't know what to do. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I got to have to take the kids to school. Well, what else can we do? I mean, you have to do that. Paul, hey, we're going to make our way back up to the house. OK, we'll be there in a bit. And Chris? Hey, girl, we'll see you. What do the boys say about all this? Well, Chris seems OK, but Ted is getting worried. That was behind on his restitution payments to the university. He hadn't made a mortgage payment in months. God, he was in trouble, and I didn't know it. Why didn't I know it? Why wasn't I there for him? Come on. Let's get home. Is there anything else in the room? No, just the picture. It was a transient hotel near the bus station. The room was empty except for that. Not even a toothbrush. Police in the Bay Area spent all last night questioning a homeless man who claims he saw someone jump from the bridge. They're still searching for a body. And with occurrence in the San Francisco Bay, we may never find him. Oh, 
boy, we're done for. We're gonna go splat to the ground. I uh, have to talk to you guys. I've, I've got some news. About Dad, right? Yes. Did you find Dad? Is Dad here? No. No. Um... You know that a lot of people have been looking for him. A lot of people have, have, have been looking for him very hard, and uh, they found out that he went all the way across the country to another city, and that's what's what's taken so long. What city? San Francisco. And, um... Your dad is, uh... He's not coming back. He's not? No, honey. Then why is he staying there? Honey, he's not staying there. <laughs> you know that he's, he's been very, uh... Your dad just couldn't take it anymore. So he thought maybe that it was time for him to go to heaven. He does dead. Yes. Yeah. Dad killed himself. <laughs> oh my dad. I want my dad. I know you do, sweetheart. I want my dad to help I me. Know. I'm so I sorry. Dad. You have to remember how much he loved you. He loved you both. He loved you both so much. How he could always make you laugh. He built this place for you. He loved you both so much. And I love you. Oh. The fun that we had together. Oh, baby. doesn't allow big dogs in these apartments. She'll be okay where she's going. She'll be happier there. But why can't she move with us? fight. Come on, get in the car. <laughs> Last one ends a rock. Right day, right day, right day! <laughs> Dad's last. Is he? No, Chris. Oh, great. That is. Oh, oh you are definitely the rock man. <laughs> I'm not the rock. You are. There we go. Come here, you. Dad and I used to do this when we were little, didn't we? Yes, you did. Yes. First, Dad, and then we got him out, and then <laughs> you, and we finally got you out. Yeah. Was Dad there when I was born? Mm-hmm. He sure was. He helped to deliver you. 
Oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. When you got bigger, he used to make your baby food. He'd, he'd mix it up in the blender. Dad cooked? Oh, yeah. He was a major good cook. You remember that? Remember your birthdays? Hmm? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's right. You were upset, he'd lie down on the bed with you and just had a magic touch. He would calm you when I couldn't. A new school, a new start may not be such an awful thing for them. And they have much choice. I can't afford to keep them at St. Mary's. I don't know how I'm going to do this. And not let them see it. I have $23 in the bank and all of this debt. Why don't you let me give you something to tide you over? Okay, now Paul and I have been talking. Gee, you know that you can always come to us. Well, I know that, and I do appreciate it. And Dick and Ann, too. No, they keep offering. But Dick has got all those medical bills now. Hey, you'll find a job. Well, I hope so. I don't know. And look at this. All of these jobs have qualifications. See, I don't have qualifications. You know what? When I, when I was first married and I took that job at the library, mm -hmm. I just handed my check over to him. I don't even know what he did with the money. I should have known. I should have made it my business. I should have been more interested in, in finances. I used to call you Sleeping Beauty. Yeah, well, now I am wide awake. Now you have her tell the mayor if he doesn't show up at the lunch, she won't get his picture in the paper. <laughs> now, what was I saying? Um, ah, yeah, attracting businesses to the area is a major part of what the Chamber of Commerce does. Assisting them, coordinating their moves. I just don't see the kind I of qualifications. I've been a, a junior. I'm just three credits short, and I, and I always mean to go back and finish. Right. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to hang on to your application. And uh, if anything materializes, I'll let you know. I need this job. <laughs> I really, I need this job. I have, I have two little boys. Elizabeth, what we're looking for is someone who has more of a business and marketing background. I have that. No, for the last 10 or 12 years, I have been doing that. The volunteer work with the, the, the literacy program and all the functions and the meetings I have organized at the club. Also, I care very deeply about the economic development of this community. I have lived here my whole life, and now I'm, I'm raising two boys here. All I'm asking is a chance. Give me a chance. OK. Let's do it. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> Let's give it two months and see what happens. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Great. Okay. Whoa, there we go. That's Ted doing at school. Getting less better. I haven't told uh, anyone else in the family yet, but I want you to know, dear, I had some tests. They weren't so good. I'm not going through another round of chemo. Dick and I decided together. Well, whatever happens, whatever you need, I'm here. Well, there we go. Oh, man. I cannot believe you left me out there. What is it?
I need new gym shoes. Yeah, I know. So how was Grandma? Oh, this was not one of her better days. Mama plays on Thursday. Are you coming? <laughs> Chris. Mom, I'm the main pilgrim. I know. What time is it? 11. I, I don't really see how I can get out of work. I, I don't know how to do this. Oh, what, what? Were you planning on handing this in? It's a mess. It's a, you're going to have to recopy it. Oh, now, listen, guys. I am tired of coming home and having to nag you guys to help me out around here. Look at this place. Ted, you need to change your shirt. That one's dirty. No, it's not. Ted, come on. I'm not leaving the house with you looking like that. I had just about enough of her on my back all the time. Hey, recopy your homework so we can go meet Grandpa for dinner. You know, your father would be so ashamed of you acting this way. Do you know how sick I am of hearing that? Hey! Get back here! Pat was fun daddy, and now all they have is me, the mother from hell. Come on, that's not true. Oh, you're a great mom, okay? You're just juggling a lot, you know, with your job and Anne being sick. Yeah. Where is the housing on the transmission? By the way, how is she? Have they given Dick any idea how long? Or? No, I mean, she is dying. We just don't know when. I was thinking I was exactly Ted's age when Mom got sick. Yeah, I guess that's probably about Chris's. Mm -hmm. I don't really remember that time so much, though, you know? Well, I do. And I hate it that my sons are reliving my childhood. <laughs> Beachy, it's hardly our childhood. Thanks, Claire. Well, we had a fun for ourselves without Mom, and that's what they have to do. I'm just not there enough for them, and there's nothing I can do about it. Is that strong? Oh, here. When he was in school, all the girls loved him. <laughs> well, everybody did. He was an extraordinary young man. You should be very proud of him. He loved you both very much. Oh, was this the New Year's Eve party, Grandma? Oh, the one where I embarrassed your father. Tell us again, Grandma. Well, it was too quiet for a party, so... I took your father to the center of the floor, and then I started to sing. You know what song? Mm hmm Let me call you, sweetheart. I'm in love with you. Let me hear you whisper that you love me. soul of our sister departed. And we commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Ensure and certain hope of the resurrection unto eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose coming in glorious majesty to judge the world, the earth and sea shall give up their dead and the corruptible bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed and made like unto his own glorious body, according to the mighty working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. And... And... Let us pray. Well, my feet hurt me, shoes. I know. I know. Ted? Um, Chris and Jordan. Um, after you hang up your good clothes, okay? Ted?
Claire. Hey, Chris. Linda Paul. Hey. Hi, Peachy. Any news? No. I have searched everywhere for him. Come on, buddy. Let's go see how that fish of yours is doing. This is my fault. It can't be. I'm sure he's all right. He was upset. Found this in his room. It's the letter Pat wrote to me. It's a suicide letter. How did he get this? I got it out of my drawer. I don't even know how long he's had it. I'm gonna put it back where I found it. I don't know, it's some sort of connection for him. He just needs it. Hey, find him. Huh? We will. Why'd you call the police? What are you, Ted? What, what are you, what, what were you doing in Logan? Where did you stay last night? With Jimmy Vaughn. Just... I don't know what the big deal is. You most certainly do know what the big deal is. Disappearance is a very powerful weapon, and you of all people should know that. You are a member of this family, and each member has a responsibility to the other ones. It's you and me and Chris, that's it. That's all we got. Just about anything in this world except losing one of you. That's right. Phase two will quadruple their facility. It'll be a huge infusion of money into the local economy. It will be a massive open house. Manufacturers from all over the world will be attending. <laughs> well, that's it then. Thank you, Derek. Bye. Elizabeth? I really have to go. Chris is moving out today. I promised him I would help him. Bill's online one? <laughs> Thank you. Hello. <laughs> When'd you get in? I'm impressed. Hey, Mom. You're late. Ted, you are such a good brother. Yeah. Hi, honey. Hey, Mom, your timing's perfect. This is the last of it. I had to circle the block three times before you were finished. <laughs> At least he's not moving in with me. I don't know how to tell you this, Ted, but uh, your place? Yeah, well, it's a, it's a health hazard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is mine. I don't want you to go. Mom, don't make a big deal, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, I know it's time. For you, too. Oh. And only be 12 blocks away. I mean, <laughs> gotta go to work. So rude. two jobs, and he's the head of a finance like a college. He's graduating from college this, this year, so I'm, I'm more than confident that he can handle his own place. You're gonna miss him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've been like roommates this last couple of years. I mean, he leaves the porch light on for me, I leave it on for him. Oh. Oh. I mean, Chris and I love, love coming here. It's such a kick to see Ted running this place. Yes. He's here now. No, it must be great. I'm babbling on about my kids. No. Oh, no, yeah. No, no, don't be silly. They, they seem like great guys. Hmm. They are. 
It amazes me. And I'm really, really proud of them. Yeah, I'm glad you suggested that we come here. <laughs> yeah? Mm -hmm. If I could uh, just get you to come visit me in Santa Fe. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, my, my boss is starting to wonder why I keep uh, volunteering to head up all these training sessions here. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I really like spending time with you, Elizabeth. I'll be right back. Hmm. Can I talk to you today? That would be very nice. I'll be right back. That would be a problem. Oh, thank you. Oh, I had a wonderful time. So did I. Yeah. Get out of here. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll call you yeah. when I uh, get to the office. OK. OK. <laughs> you uh, you mess me already, don't you? <laughs> I get out of here. I'll see you in about 10 minutes, okay, okay? Linda, Linda Burr. Hey, Elizabeth, hi. Hey, I've got something for you. Oh, I'm so sorry to bother you. I know how busy you are, but I need your advice. Yeah, the president of the Chamber of Commerce needs advice from me? Yes. What? Oh, no, this is a mistake. Yeah, it's gotta be somebody who assumed his number. Or it's a clerical screw up. That's what I was thinking. What, but why would a, a number that hasn't been active for so many years suddenly spring to life? Now, Elizabeth, you know this isn't your husband, right? Yes, of course. But it is unsettling. And I've been on the phone trying to get a person, a human voice at Social Security forever. And I, I, I'm not getting anywhere. Let me give Chip Carney a call. He's a friend of mine over there. If anybody can get to the bottom of this, Chip can. I wish I could help you, Mrs. Welsh. I'm sorry. What am I supposed to do? Well, as I told Linda, once you make a request for review, I'd be glad to personally attend to it. But with our rules of confidentiality... Yes, I know all about that. We really aren't able to give out any more information than what you've already received. Well, the information I have received doesn't make any sense. I'm not asking you to break any rules or for any special treatment. Well, I guess I am. My, my sons and I are being asked to repay an awful lot of money. And, and it's not that much money if you spread it over 10 years and you, and you throw in college tuition, but it's a lot of money to have to pay. And it's not just that the money is the issue. My husband is dead. My sons were little when he took his life. And we had to live through that once and now because of some gigantic mistake, you're asking us to go through that again. And after everything that we have been through, I deserve an answer. Let me get you some water. I don't want any water. Let me uh, get you some water. Number holder 
is under investigation for another crime in Maine? This man's wife and children are paid survivor benefits and he is... He's not dead. Very much alive. Thanks for helping me out, Linda. I can't believe we can do this. It's the information age. With the social security number and the right website, you can find anything. Here it is. They have a driver's license database. And look, there's Maine. This is the number you want to call. I'm going to call the yep. number. Hello, database. Hi. I was looking at your website, and I wanted to match uh, Social security number with a with a person. What's the number? Nine nine eight nine one one five nine one. One moment. Okay. Ready? Uh, yeah. Patrick Hennessy, Welsh, six foot three, one hundred and eighty five pounds, green eyes, brown hair, must wear glasses to drive. Two eighty two Armitage Road, Kennebunkport, Maine. Um, thank you. Welcome. What? That's him. <laughs> it's Pat. Yeah, I'm fine. I just lost track of time. Hey, I found something interesting. I mm. called my guy at the university, and he pulled a file on the embezzlement case. He says there were payments against the debt for the first couple of months, then nothing. Right, right. Well, well, Pat was dead. Well, somebody paid off the whole thing a little over a year ago. What? <laughs> Who paid it? He said it was anonymous. Over $10,000. Now, why would anyone pay off Patrick Welsh's debt? I don't know. Timothy Michael Kingsbury. WJNP. Well, good morning. Is Tim Kingsbury there, please? This is Tim. Pat? Yeah. You must have the wrong number. He and this woman he is either living with or married to are all over the paper. He's saving a historic building there. He's hosting a black tie gala here. <laughs> And the, the local gossip columnist even called him the amazing Tim Kingsbury. These are from the column that he wrote himself. Tim trains for a marathon. Tim goes on a date. This is the, the woman, Sharon Baker. How on earth did you get this? The university website. She's the director of the development fund. I, I just can't get over the fact that you've done all this. I mean, I... I, I called him. You did what? I couldn't help it. What did he say? He said I had the wrong number. Did it sound like Pat Walsh? No. 
What? See, I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know. No, it can't be Pat Walsh. There's no way. Come on, Peachy. If it was Pat Walsh, okay, if he were alive and living with another woman, she'd be 22. What do the boys say about all this? They don't know, and I haven't told them. And I'm, I'm not going to, at least not now. They have been through enough. And I have decided that I am going to go there. You, you most certainly are not. Yeah, I have to see this with my own eyes. See what? Tim Kingsbury? I thought you'd understand, you Claire. Hear? Forget this, OK? I mean, I it, have to find out about this. You have to leave this to people who know what they're doing. You don't, Peachy. I thought you'd understand. I'm going. OK, then I'm going with you. No, you're not. I have to do it alone. There are things I can find out there. What things? What can you find out? The social security file so that he was being investigated for another crime. Those are public records. I could find those. Claire. I'm not going to do anything go. stupid. I'm not going to take any chances. But I have to find out about this. What is he doing up there? Going through some old clothes. Uh, I want you to go through uh, my marketing project. I think it's pretty good. Oh, well, I would love to. I would love to. Watch that, will you? Yep. Hello. Hi, Bill. No, no, it's fine. We were just having a little celebration. Ted made manager. <laughs> oh, you're not. No. Yeah, yeah, I do want to come there, but I... Right. Okay. Bye. And how was Bill? Well, he seemed fine. Uh, are you gonna go down there? Um, uh, I don't know. But, uh, I thought you liked him. I like him fine. You got trust issues, Mom. No problem. Hey, this will work for the party, huh? <sighs> What's the matter, Mom? I remember your father in that tuxedo. And you look very handsome. I think you look like a lounge singer, but uh, you know, that's just me. Yeah. Come on, guys, let's um, celebrate, huh? Happy job, Ted. <laughs> here, here. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, well. Um, I have to tell you guys, I'm going to go away for a few days. With Bill? Well, where are you going? Going to Maine. Maine? On business? Well, kind of. By yourself? Yes, yes. You think you could mind your business a little bit? Do I keep tabs on you? I don't think so. <clears throat> you know, you really do look like a lounge singer. Yeah. Let me call you sweetheart. I'm in love with you. <laughs> Grandma sang that. Let me hear, hear you whisper that you love me too. Keep the love light burning going in your eyes so true. Let me call you sweetheart. I'm in love with you. <laughs> Excuse me. Can I help you? Yes, please. I'd like some information about a criminal case mm -hmm. within the last year. It involves um, Timothy Kingsbury. You say it would be a criminal case? I believe so, yes. No, I don't find any cases concerning a Timothy Kingsbury. <laughs> Are you sure it's Kingsbury? Um, could you try Patrick H. Welsh? W-E-L-S-H. Here it is. Thank you. Full service. Claire, <laughs> I found him. Wait, what? I found out why he had to start using his old social security number again. Peachy. He forged a birth certificate. It's 
Somebody found out, pressed charges, and, and, and they convicted him. Listen, I'm getting on a plane. No, no, it's fine. I'm fine. Mr. Dusak? That's me. How can I help you? My name is Elizabeth Welsh. Yes, Miss Welsh? I used to be married to Patrick Welsh, or Tim Kingsbury. You were his probation officer? Yes, I was. Mm -hmm. He told me he'd been paying child support and his family didn't want anything to do with him. And you believe that? I believed every word he said. He always had that effect on people. When the charges were filed, Tim turned himself in and confessed his real identity. He said he had an unhappy life back in Ohio, and that when he'd come here, he started calling himself Tim Kingsbury so he could get a clean start. And now this, what you're telling me. I read the, the records here. H how did that happen? How did he get away with it? He really didn't. He pled guilty, received a fine. Probation. Oh. The judge told him he could go on being Tim Kingsbury in public, though he had to use his real name on all legal records. Like Social Security. Exactly. Right. One condition of the probation was that he had to repay what he owed the University in Ohio, which I know he did. He also had to go to the Social Security office here and identify himself. That's how I got the letter. Mm. Look, Tim Kingsbury's like this legend around here. People think he's a remarkable individual. I've had a very intense and personal relationship with this organization. The work that Sharon and I have done over the years with the uh, Heritage Charities, the Women's Crisis Center, the Boy Scouts, the Preservation Society, have given me a past, a present, and a future that I'm very proud of. And I'm honored by this recognition that you've given me here today. So thank you very much.
Hate you. I always knew this was going to happen someday. I never thought you were going to be the one to find me. How did you? Social Security sent me a letter. They want back the survivor benefits Ted and Chris collected. Peachy. God, you look... It's so good to see you. It's almost $60,000, Pat. And they want it now. Leaving was the best thing I could do for you. No, it, w it was the best thing you could do for you. And you didn't just leave me. You left Chris and Ted. It was the best thing you could do for you. I couldn't take being that person that brought so much shame on you. I lost our home. I had to sell everything, everything that we had. Moved Ted and Chris into this awful apartment, had to give away Sadie. It just... I'm so sorry. What in the world did you think you were doing? I went crazy that day. No, you left and you came here and you got the lay of the land and found out who's who. And then presto, the amazing Tim Kingsbury is born. You, you just don't know. No, no, I don't. And um, who is Sharon Baker? She's the woman I'm living with. You married? No, we're not married. And do you have children? No. No children. Good, because I wouldn't want them hurt the way that your sons were hurt. You haven't even asked about them. Ted and Chris, they were so little and innocent when you left. They adored you. You were a god to them. Do you even know that your mother died? No. I didn't know. And you let her die, believing that you had committed suicide. So, so what now? You want, uh, you're going to have me arrested? I really have no interest in seeing you in jail. All I want is for you to contact Social Security about repayment. And then you can live and die as the biggest deal in Kenny Bunkport, and I will leave you alone. I don't have that kind of money. Or... Any money, for that matter. You never look back, did you? ago, I received a notice from Social Security, a letter saying that the survivor benefits you guys received had to be repaid. And the reason they gave was that the number holder was not deceased, that Patrick Hennessy Welsh was alive. Somebody's got Dad's Social Security number. Well, that's what I thought at first. Mom. Through his social security number, I tracked him down. And I saw him. It's not somebody else. It's him. It is your father. 
Dad? You saw Dad? Yes. That's why you went to Maine? Wait a minute. You went to find Dad? You didn't even tell well, us? I, I wasn't sure, and I had to be sure. He has been there all of this time. It's just living under another name, Tim Kingsbury, Timothy Michael Kingsbury. I just can't talk to her right now. I know, I know, I know. But you gonna give me a call later? We'll figure it out? Yeah. If it was him, if it wasn't him, I didn't want to be the one to make you dredge up all of those feelings. Yeah, but you still should have told us. I'm sorry. I hardly remember the guy. What I remember mostly is just what you and Grandma told us. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you know, for Ted, it's different. You know that. And Ted takes things to heart. I know he does. Well, anyways, I gotta go. I got exams. Chris, we have to talk about what you guys want to do. Frankly, I don't need to do anything. He says he doesn't have the money, and I can't pay it back. So I'm willing to try something else. If well, like what? I could go to the DA and have him file charges against your father. If that's something you're comfortable with. I can't speak for Ted, but yeah, I'm comfortable with that. I was only trying to protect you. You can't do that. You know, you have this thing about telling us what you think we need to know. Just try telling us the truth. Well, I wasn't trying to deceive you. From the moment he was gone, you made him perfect. The perfect dad. Well, I wanted you to have a father that you could be proud of. Why couldn't you have just left him and let us have the father that we had? What do you want me to say? You know, you don't need my permission to do this. This concerns the three of us. Nail him. Thank 
Guilty pleas on each count of the indictment. With regard to Bond, Mr. Weiner, is there anything you wish to say? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Sharon Baker, a close personal friend of Mr. Welsh, is here to offer herself as personal custodian of Mr. Welsh. Uh, she is here to assure that any condition placed upon the court on Mr. Welsh's release will be adhered to. I would add that he is a pillar of his community. There is uh, absolutely no evidence to indicate that he would be a danger to the community, and it's for these reasons that I would respectfully request a bond in reasonable amount. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Weiner. Mr. Becker? Your Honor, whether he is a pillar of his community, there is a matter of uh, opinion. Skipping out on parole once before, changing his identity, remaining gone for 10 years. His track record is adequate reason for this court to set bond in the amount of $500,000. Bond is set in the amount of $300,000. You may go with the bailiff. The DA says that the bond is too high for Sharon Baker to commit to. Your dad's going to have to stay in jail. Abandoned his family and left a note saying he was going to kill himself. Instead, he ran off to Maine and fashioned a new life. Today, Welsh pleaded not guilty in a Licking County courtroom to felony charges for non-support of dependence and complicity to theft. In 1988, Welsh was found guilty of embezzling money from the university where he worked as a fundraiser. He was on probation when he fled from Ohio, leaving behind his wife and two sons, 12 and 9. Following another conviction of forgery just this past year in Kennebunk Court, Welsh was ordered to begin using his real Hello. social security number. This is she. Elizabeth Welsh, his former wife, learned that her husband was still yes. alive when she received okay. a letter from the Social Security Administration seeking repayment for the money paid to her sons when her former husband was, was declared your father's to be attorney. dead. Mrs. Welsh told reporters father wants to see no satisfaction should her former husband have to spend time in jail. The big lesson here, she said, is that no one should walk away from their family. with them if I can. That's the... It's the only thing that matters to me. Don't sit there and play with their feelings. Don't you dare. They're coming to see their father. You have to be conscious of that. Think of that. I'll keep it in mind. You have to admit, oh, the two of us did better apart than we ever did together. What changed? Our whole life together. Did you ever love me? Were we ever in love? I'm gonna wait here for you. Mom, I'm big boys now. Well, I know that. I want to protect you. I know, we're fine, okay? Okay. Okay.
I'm so glad you came. I'm, this means a lot. This means a lot. And I, I have a lot of things I want to say to you boys. I know you have questions. Why the hell did you leave? Oh, I, I, th you know, I thought it was best. It's not an answer. You want? I think I deserve an answer. Oh, well. I was 11 years old. This is what you left us with. Do you... Um. Remember this? I'm, I'm sorry. Let's not pull. Dad, you remember this? My, my darling, you are not only my love, but my life. Son. I don't know how to put into words all I want to express to you. Son. You deserve a better man than I have become. I must give you that by ending my life. Son, I'm sorry, son. Please tell Ted and Chris that I will always be watching over them from heaven. And then they've made me proud to be their father. Son, I'm fu I, we were about to lose everything we had in the world. Our car, our house. How could that matter everything. more than our No, I run, please forgive me. No, how could that matter? Son. Stop I, saying that. You son, have no right to say that to son, me. Son, I love you. You have no son, right. Son, listen to me. I, son, Ted. What I expected. I guess this instant bond or something. I'm done with the guy. I remember throwing a football to him when I was seven. <laughs> One time I fell off the back of the golf cart. You guys just kept driving on, and came back, and I was standing there. You remember that? Some parts, yeah. Jogging them. I remember jogging. Man, I wonder if our treehouse is still there. He was a cool dad to have. The court's been informed that the defendant wishes to change his plea today from that of not guilty to no contest. Mr. Wells, do you understand that by entering pleas of no contest, you are giving up your right to have a trial by jury or a trial by the court? Yes, Your Honor. Do you understand that you are giving up your right to require your accusers to appear before you and to confront you with the evidence they have? I do, Your Honor. And do you understand that you are giving up your right to cross-examine your accusers? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Welsh. In the event I find you guilty, the only thing that remains to be done is to pass sentence. And that sentence could include a period of years in a state penal institution. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. This court finds the defendant guilty as charged of all counts as filed in the indictment, those counts being felony non-support of dependents and complicity to theft. We will reconvene on the 21st of the month at 8 a.m. Sentencing. She wake yet? Yeah, just she'll be in a minute. Yeah. Stopped off, got some real maple syrup. We can heat it up. Ah, just like at Shea Teddy. Yeah. <clears throat> Quit eating croissants, man. <laughs> I'm hungry. Did you write your letter yet? What letter? You know, the one for the, uh, for the sentencing hearing, they said that we could, uh, write a letter or, uh, make a statement. Yeah, and say what? 30 to life and hard labor? I think I'm gonna pass on that. Is that easy for you? You just shrug it off? Drop it, okay, Ted? No, I mean it. I mean, it's easier for you to just deny the whole thing ever happened than, than to deal with it? It sucks, but I'm dealing with it, all right? Then say that! That is nobody's business, man! You know what? I am so sick and tired of all this. I'm not going to tell him how much time to give my father, all right? 
Oh, guys, how nice. Yeah, happy but birthday. Mr. Welsh, is there anything you wish to say before the court pronounces sentence? Yes, Your Honor. You may proceed. This, this is not intended to influence your decision today. It's something I need to say to my family. Because of what I've done, you may never know how much I've loved you, or how much I... I've missed you. Ted and Chris, I love you deeply. I really do. And I hope to God, I pray to God to give you the understanding that not all crime is committed out of hate. Sometimes there's fear and even love. And I'm sorry for what I've done. And I'm, I'm ready to continue with the uh, punishment. Mr. Welsh, do you understand that? Your Honor, sir, I'm sorry, but may I say something too, please? My name is Christopher Welsh. Come forward, Mr. Welsh. Ron, over the past couple months, the major question that everyone's asked is why? Why do you think your father did this? I'm sure everybody thinks that that's the most important question. But for me, it's not why. It's how. How can a father turn his back on a family that loves him? How can a father in one breath say, you know, he loves somebody and then turn and run? How can he, for 10 years, how can he not once pick up the phone and call his son to say hello? How can he look me in the eye right now? Everything that I've accomplished, Your Honor, what I came here to tell you in this court today, to my mother. What a wonderful mother my brother and I have. Everything I've accomplished is because of her. You couldn't have asked for anything more than a mom and a dad. And she has been both. My brother Ted and I feel very lucky. That's what I wanted to say. Thank you, sir. The defendant will please rise. Mr. Welsh, I have read the reports 
the sentencing memoranda, and I am convinced that you are a moral with no conscience. You left a wife and two great sons, a family that many people would wish and pray for. Your acts were cowardly, and they were criminal. This court sentences you to four years to be served at the Rockway Correctional Center. You are ordered to pay full restitution to Social Security and the Northwestern Mutual Insurance Company. And, sir, you will pay every penny of that. You may go with the bailiff now. Court is adjourned. It's over. Mm. I guess I thought it would feel different. I think that's the way it's going to be, Mom. Mom? Well, <laughs> oh, I just have been hoping. I mean, I, I still hope that the pieces will come together in some way that means something. Mm. That might not happen. We may never know. You know, we've been living with this thing for so long, but what we know now is that he's alive, living, and we know where he is. Well, for the next 48 months, give or take. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're not doing that badly. I mean, we're here, we're getting a free meal. <laughs> Don't push it. <laughs> <laughs> to our family. Yes. To our family. To our family. I thought it was good. They didn't talk too long. Hey, smile, graduate. Oh, he's back. Put your hat on. Put your cap on. Um, move, you guys. Take, move. Nice, nice Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. See ya. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even like crazy. I'm not. Uh, oh, I love those two. I have loved them when they were babies, and now they are young men. Yeah. I am very proud of them. I'm not getting out of it that easy. Who wants to be a big handsome graduate? Uh. Listen, I need you guys to check um, the house for me next week. Can I bring in the mail, make sure everything's okay? Because I'm going on a little trip. Mom? Another trip? Mm -hmm. Yes. Only uh, this time it's with me. <laughs> hey, that's great. Matt? Where are you guys going? Yeah, your mother is uh, finally coming out for a little visit. You are? You're going to New Mexico? Yes. Yeah. Look at the camera. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I can't. Oh, I can't. 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 I can't.